One of the first families and symbology that we need to adjust inside of the Revit template are our level symbols. And we can see those inside of one of our elevation views. In our project browser, make sure the elevations is expanded out and then double click on the south elevation. When you do this, you'll see two level symbols. One is for level one and the second is for level two. And both of these are technically the same level symbol and I'll call them family. If we select on one of them, We'll see underneath properties here with the type selector list, we currently have one level and it's called level one quarter inch head. Now that quarter inch head is the size of the symbol here at the end of our level marker. If I select on edit type underneath properties, we'll see these are the properties that make up the level symbol, including the line style or the line type that make up the level line. But the way that it's going to display the text and that symbol at the end, those are controlled by the symbol here where it says level head dash circle. Just for your reference, if we would click inside of this box, we could then select this down arrow and then choose level head no bubble off of the list. By doing this, it'll get rid of that little bubble at the end. And if you select on apply, you'll then see that that bubble goes away. If we want to bring it back, once again, we can come up here, select on level head, no bubble, click on the down arrow, and then select on level head circle, then select on apply to bring it back. The reason why this works is that this is displaying a symbol that has been loaded into our Revit template. One of them is drawn with that bubble on the end, and the other is drawn without that bubble on the end. So if we want to make a change to that text or to that bubble, we have to then go into the Revit family that controls this and then create a new Revit family, change its properties, then load it back into the project, and then create a new type of family and type of level family inside of the Revit template that will control and display our new changes. So to do this, we need to begin by clicking on the words OK here underneath the type properties. From there, underneath our project browser, we're going to come down to the bottom of the project browser and then expand out families. Then expand out the annotation symbols category. We're going to look for those level heads. And in this case, these are the two different level heads that we were just looking at. One's the level head circle, the other's the level head no bubble. Click and highlight on level head circle, right click, and then go to edit. This will allow us to make a modification to this level head. I don't really want to make a change to level head circle. I like the way that it is. So let's create a new family that's based off of this level head circle. So to do this, we're just going to come up to the big R in the upper left hand corner, click on the R, and we'll do a save as a family. And now we'll save this into our working files folder on our desktop. I'm going to call this level head IS for infinite skills. Really, you just need to give this a name that you will recognize and be able to find later on. After you've done this, click on Save. So now we have a new family called Levelhead-IS. The next thing I'd like to do is change the height of this elevation text. To do that, we'll select on where it says the word Elevation, and we can see underneath Properties, this is a label 1 8 of an inch. Well, I'd really like this to be 3 seconds of an inch, so a little bit smaller. So to do this, we'll select on Edit Type. Then here where it says Text Size, we'll notice that it says eighth of an inch. But we don't really want to change the eighth of an inch right now. The reason is, is that we would change it for the eighth of an inch label size. So what we need to do is we need to make a duplicate of this eighth of an inch. So you can select on the Duplicate button. And we will type in three. 30 seconds of an inch, and then select on OK. This is a new type called 330 seconds of an inch. Because of that, we can now come down here to the text size and also tell it that it's 330 seconds of an inch. If we wanted to make this bold or italic, adjust the width factor, we could. We also could adjust whether or not this was an Arial font. We could make it Times Roman or any standard Windows font that we wanted, all through this dialog. Now that we have these type properties set up, come down here to OK. Click on OK, and now you'll see that this elevation text is now smaller. It's that 3 seconds of an inch. If we wanted to adjust the way that this symbol at the end looked, we could do that as well by using our different drawing tools. In this case, I am going to leave it, but we could find those drawing tools underneath the Create tab, and we could just use standard line work, circles, filled regions. 
Next thing we need to do is load this back into our project environment. So come up here to load in the project and select load in the project. Now all it's done is actually loaded into the project. We haven't made an adjustment yet to the elevation. So to do this, let's come over here to the elevations and then double click where it says south. Now one of the things that I said is that we hadn't made an adjustment to the elevation. Well, we're really gonna be making an adjustment to the level marker inside of the elevation. But the level marker does set what elevation that each of these Revit objects will be drawn on. These are the two existing level markers again. Select on either one of them. It doesn't matter which one. When you do, you'll see that we still have level one quarter inch head. We'll select on edit type. Now, once again, we're gonna do duplicate. And in this case, we're gonna create one. Technically, it is a quarter inch head still. So we're just gonna leave this called one quarter inch head, and then we're gonna add a dash, three 30 seconds at the end of it. And then click on okay to that. Now that we have that new type of symbol, we can now come down here to the symbol where it says level head circle and change that to that level head IS that we just created. Now select on OK. And we can now see that level one, the one that we just had selected, now has that new symbology associated with it. If we wanted to change this project wide, we could. You could select on where it has the level two. You could then right click on this in order to select this particular level. You could come down here to select all instances in the entire project, which really means all instances of this type of level in each and every view in the template. And then here on the type selector list, click, and then choose that new 330 seconds off of the list. You can see it's now been adjusted here inside of our south elevation view. If we go to the north elevation view and take a look, you'll notice that we have this change as well inside of these elevation views because we selected them all throughout the entire project and then replace them with our new level head. One last thing that I'd like to do before finishing up our adjustment of our levels is change the name of our level. In this case, it's called level one. And what I like to do when I'm dealing with my levels is put in a number right in front, such as one dash first floor, and then clicking out here in the space. It'll ask, do you wanna rename the corresponding views and tell it yes to that. And you'll notice that underneath your project browser, those views now have the appropriate name, the same as the one that's here in the level. Do the same thing with level two. Two dash second floor. And then click out here in the space. Yes, rename the corresponding views. By doing this, it'll ease the sorting underneath the project browser of each of these floors. Whenever you have first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, that isn't exactly alphabetical order. So by doing one, two, three, four, and putting those numbers next to them, you can then better sort over here underneath the project browser each of your different levels so you can get to the correct floor plans easier. Whenever you're manipulating levels, there's really two different things to consider. One is, is you may need to create your own level family and then adjust its properties accordingly. The second thing you'll need to do is adjust how the levels are named so that whenever you start up your project, your default setup will have the right naming conventions for the levels.